my name is Kelvin Cook for the people watching. And this is Dr. Haley Oliver. So if you want to introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, well, let's see. It is, what is it? It's July 24th right now. So I have to be careful. My title changes in a few days, but not yet. So today I'm Associate Professor Haley Oliver. August 10th, when you come to campus, it's Professor Oliver. Got to get myself an upgrade. So uh, you'll find that faculty have different ranks. There's Assistant Associate and Full Professor. So I'm excited to be Full Professor in a few days. That's awesome. Always it's good. Yeah, it's good. We're, we're, we're done, uh, done fighting the advancement. Yeah, you always love those promotions, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> one less thing to think about. Well, um, in less than 15 words, please give a description of your research. My group studies food safety and foodborne pathogens in retail food systems so we can find strategies to remove those organisms and protect public health. Woo. <laughs> I know. I didn't even practice that. Um, so I remember, so at a AAAS, uh, so uh, the, the big science foundation here in the U.S., mm -hmm. they had us start off with two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, and 15 seconds of how you describe your research. You should see researchers cry, like break, <laughs> because it is so hard to like sum up what you do because you're so excited about it. But it's like, but if you can't do it in 15 seconds, you probably... <laughs> time for some reflection <laughs> see i was wondering what you were gonna say because i don't think i could summarize it in 15 words and i have a lot less to say about it than you do so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, but see what what this is the dirty secret though Kelvin. you guys do all the detailed hard work and i'm just kind of out here in the ether these days saying, i think we do food safety I think <laughs> we do it. so you know i just pay the bills <laughs> <laughs> nice um Ooh, another really good one. So I know that you've traveled quite a bit to some really inch cool and very interesting places. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's the weirdest, ex well, first of all, tell where, and what's the weirdest experience you've had while traveling? Man, I, I, I was thinking about that a little bit earlier, and I it's so hard to pick one. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's usually some terrorist attack or like some, some thrill or risk of that thrill. So, We'll go with the one in Afghanistan. Um, Amanda Deering, Paul Ebner, and I, so some other food science and animal science faculty, spent quite a bit of time in Afghanistan working in food safety and food technology. So food science, but developed for Afghanistan. And there was one time Amanda Deering and I, Dr. Deering and I, we were leaving um, Kabul and it, it just felt rushed. You know, we're like, man, this plane's taken off fast. Like we burned down the runway and you know, Kabul sits in this bowl anyway. It's surrounded by mountains. And so you got to kind of, you know, if you're on a plane, you got to punch it to get out of there anyway. <laughs> but this just like felt a little extra, you know, like we were really taken off. And then when we landed in Dubai, which is our first stop, when we landed, we discovered that there were missile attacks <laughs> near the airport. <laughs> and so we were in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that it had nothing to do with food safety, but it definitely, um, in hindsight, it got our heart rate up, but you know, otherwise it was just you know, a fun plane ride out of Kabul. But um, <laughs> that's not to say that we always felt unsafe. It was actually a really um, um, big privilege to be able to work there, to develop an entire food mm -hmm. science program there. And um, you know, like most of the world, people are people, and they're they're looking to improve their lives. So it was a really great experience. Yeah. No. That. Sounds terrifying and awesome at the same time. Well, I it, feel killed like... our, it killed my Kenya trip in March too. There were terrorist <laughs> attacks when we our plane was going to land in Nairobi, so uh, <sighs> it was the the longest trip to New York by way of Kenya and Tanzania. I... Mm. <laughs> you've been to, you've been to <clears throat> what places have you been to? Because oh wow, like a, okay, uh, hmm. do I go east or west? Um, Colombia, Haiti. Turkey, Afghanistan, Pakistan's amazing, India, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Senegal, Kenya, Tanzania. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of circling my continents here. I get, mm -hmm. And then, you know, I've made a few trips to Europe here and there, a few different countries there, but uh, the, the biggest fun's always kind of, yeah. So <laughs> it's, ev Europe. it's everywhere, really. It's everywhere. I've not been to Alaska or Hawaii. I never, you know, don't get that done. Um, 
or Antarctica. Goals. It'd be cool though. Yeah, it'd be literally. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. <laughs> What's um, you, all those cool places sound awesome. What's the worst like food safety offense you've? Because I mean, all of those are kind of traveling different places and doing work. But have you ever walked into a place and been like, "Oh my gosh, what are you doing?" Yeah, but you can experience that right here at home too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, food safety. Uh, you know, you know, nobody wants diarrhea, and you certainly don't want it when you're not home. <laughs> um, so I think you know, hand washing practices. Um, mm -hmm. cross-contaminating uh, you know raw meat you, you just sit there and you go oh <laughs> it's gonna be a weight loss program I see this mm. week. <laughs> no. is, the, uh, <laughs> is there one specific experience that stands out from the rest oh wow oh I don't know it, 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 No, well, let's see, uh, where were we in here? Oh, we were in Bangladesh not too long ago, and it was at a, a hotel for expats, you know, people that are, uh, you know, usually coming from Europe or the U.S. This guy was at the salad bar, which I was like, well, one, I'm not eating salad, period. But he literally, and you know, this is, this is somebody, he might have been German, like he was somebody working for a non-government organization in development. He literally was going through the salad dressings, tasting them, like with the servings. Mm. And it was like. Are we going to die? No. Would I really prefer you didn't do that? Yeah. And my colleague from Cornell, he actually got up and uh, gave him a, a public lecture on it. And I, I was like, oh, oh this is happening. Oh. Um, but it was still like, oh, why'd you do that? Like, that, that that's not a. That's not my cultural norm. That is not a mistake I would want to make in front of a bunch of food safety professors. And to all the people who haven't met any food safety professors yet, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're coming for you. No, I, I, I didn't have, I, I was, I think I was so struck by that. I'm like mm -hmm. paralyzed, but no, my colleague took care of it. So somebody's coming for you. So behave. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. A fun question now, or fun for us. Okay. This was, this was requested for both you and Dr. Applegate. Ooh, um, oh, this ought to be, ought to be <laughs> an interesting riff between those answers. <laughs> uh, what would be the most terrifying microbe to be grown to the size of Godzilla? And this was specifically requested by a food science student. Wow. Well, it depends, like, well, yeah. It depends on if we're talking like physiologically, mm -hmm. like what it would look like, or if we're talking about the damage that it could do. Um, I'm gonna go with the lens of, of the damage that it could do. I think Clostridium difficile mm. um, would, would make my list only because it is a spore former. Now it does need, it's kind of finicky, you know, it's gonna need some specific growth conditions, but it, that sucker's tough. And it's hard to inactivate. And you know, if you've heard of fecal transplants, it's the reason for those. <laughs> so, you know, if you, you scale that up, I I think that one would have to make my list. Yeah, that'd be a movie that I wouldn't want to watch. Um no, it no. just very no, you know how mm. you know how you save that was with one big fecal transplant? I don't know how you would <laughs> on a, on that scale. I don't know. I don't I don't know. What's the what's the world version of an autoclave? Like <laughs> yeah. uh, NASA's gonna have something. Yeah, NASA. we'll, we'll let them. <laughs> Go with NASA. I don't know. So, um, fun, fun answer. Totally fun answer. That was awesome. Uh, now to, of course, the obligatory COVID question because everyone's talking about it, and you can't escape it, no matter how hard you try. Just recorded an entire talk <laughs> on it about two hours ago. You're right. Ooh. It's right here. I got it for you. What you got? What have you been up to? Like, um, are things normal? I highly doubt that. Uh, but, but how are things going? Um, you know, it looks, I am in my office. So, you know, we, we are um, in a staged return to campus with a lot of precautions. I have my very, I'll put it on upside down, Greyhound mask because, oh, right. Oh, 
It's just, they're usually upside down, which is <laughs> appropriate because these dogs are about that dumb. I mean, this is kind of what they look like all the time anyway. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's definitely put a pause on our international capacity work. Um, it slowed down research for a moment. We had a big change in how classes were delivered in the spring. But, you know, there's a lot of silver linings that can come from this dynamic. One, how we communicate. Uh, a colleague of mine said, I'm never walking across campus for another meeting. And I'm like, that's not a bad idea. Because guess what? Zoom works just as, just as well. Um, you know, we, we, we adapt. It's a, it's a part of resiliency. It's, it's a part of shoot, college experience, right? Um, you're going to be out of your comfort zone. Things are different. But uh, am I looking forward to like back to live instruction and kind of uh, <laughs> less isolation in my <laughs> office? Absolutely. Um, but things are still moving. Um, we have had great international partners and um, things haven't slowed down too much. That or we've adapted. Heck yeah. No, that's great. And I've been home. I haven't been home. You know, I'm never home. And so, <laughs> yeah, when everything kind of crashed in March, it, it literally took me two weeks to be like, where am I? I'm at home. <laughs> oh, no. You're, you're living in your house? No way. I, I lived in my house. And I finally, I think it was about a month ago, put my suitcases away. It had been nine weeks. And I'm like, you can put them away now. We're not going anywhere. I did, so I took him to the basement. That was, that was emotional. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sure it was. I'm, I'm sure it was great. I just laughed because I was like, "Why did it take me that long?" See, that's exactly the opposite of a lot of us because a lot of us are like, "Oh, we got to get back to campus. We got to start seeing people," and you're just like, "Oh, basking in the in the alone time at home." Craigslist suitcases, <laughs> a lot of miles. <laughs> uh, well, um. What ignited your interest in food science from the beginning, or food safety? Hmm. Um, nobody likes diarrhea. Mm. Um, so that's, you know, that's easy. No, um, so I started out as a communication major. Oh, oh boy. Uh, that is not a major, uh, the, the <laughs> content, I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it. It was too, a little too arbitrary, and that's not true. It is a, a it's a very, you know, specific discipline. I just couldn't get my little mind to bend around those corners. And I somehow ended up taking general microbiology, which like here at Purdue, it's <laughs> gonna be a tough class. Uh, it was the toughest class I ever took. I've never worked harder in my life. I don't know how you <laughs> felt about it, but- yep. No, that's, that's right. <laughs> that, that was a commitment. <laughs> it was in Wyoming, it is here. The, I mean, you just can't escape. General microbiology is just so much information. Um, but I loved it. I was like, holy cow, that was amazing. And I grew up in production agriculture. And, but I was like, man, I just really like this microbiology thing. And so how you can combine those is through food science, where a lot of food microbiologists are housed. Food microbiology can be safety, quality, fermentation, spoilage, yeah. all big pieces of, of the system. I like safety. I liked the public health um, implications of it. And, you know, when you start to tie it out to 600 million cases of foodborne illness globally each year, uh, I forget what the U.S. numbers are, a couple, several million, um, it, it's a huge part of our economy and the global economy. And I, I like that it's a justified, easy reason to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, and I noticed you had the cool greyhound mask. And... This was actually, it was a different question to begin with, but we modified it to be about your dogs. Yes. <laughs> so if you were shipwrecked on a deserted island with, and you only got to pick one of your dogs, no. which one would it be and why? And I don't know why this would happen, but you know, you got to choose. <laughs> I know which one it would be. I, 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 I'm heartless that way. Nitro is such a puss. Like he's, my, my Brindle Greyhound, um yeah he's he's a princess mm -hmm. he doesn't walk on the grass when it's wet he won't go out in the rain he'd explode before he went out in the rain and you know if you're on a deserted island you're going to need a little resilience and you're going to need a, a tougher creature to hang out with and i just the whining all the time i think he would break me although i could <laughs> eat him 
You know, I, I would finally <laughs> not feel bad. Like, you know what? We're having Greyhound soup tonight. You know, um, that is that is not something I've ever heard a dog owner say. Got to be honest. Yeah, no. And I mean, this is when, when you're when you're talking about you know resilience. So Marnie, Marnie would get to go, but I would have a harder time eating Marnie. So mm -hmm. maybe I should take Nitro. Now I'm conflicted. I'll, I'll have to map it out. Okay, okay. But you know, just make a contingency in case that happens because. You wouldn't want to be unprepared in these times. You know really. what? Right now, I think they want to eat me. Like, they are <laughs> seriously like, go back to work. Get out of our house. You're invasive. The rules suck. You got to go. <laughs> so I might be the one that goes. I, You know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, like, yeah, if I'm not here in the fall, the gray house got me. <laughs> hey, you're not showing up for your classes, Dr. Oliver. I wonder where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Have <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's the coolest thing that you've ever got to experience in your career? Now, this might be connected to traveling, but you know, throw something at us. Wow, you know, the coolest thing about this job is the is the amount of unknowns and the mm -hmm. things that show up. Um, you know, I didn't plan to do this for a living. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do forever, <laughs> but you know, just the stuff that shows up is mind blowing. Um, like going to Pakistan, I still think it's one of the most interesting countries. And and maybe the wildest thing, like, again, you know, <laughs> you're Pakistan. Yeah. It was great. And um, food was amazing. And we were standing, it was the University of Faisalabad, the University of Agriculture in Faisalabad. And we're in their library. And there's this row of TVs. And it's like, you start looking at like, it's stills, but it's all, it's in this, on these TVs. And it's it's the staged explode successful explosion of their first nuclear weapon in the library at the, and i'm just like hmm. you know? <laughs> interesting <laughs> you know, well but it is i mean from a from a you know positioning in the world stage that was important and mm -hmm. you know you you not too many people get to go to pakistan and see that that country source of pride and it and it was just like wow that's a lot, <laughs> but really fascinating in its own right. But no, I have tons of stories like that. And, and, you know, again, you can't plan for that in this career. And that's probably the best part of the job is every day is different. So many wild opportunities and not too many boring days. If, if it's, if I'm bored, it's my fault. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. It's, it's just to me, and I'm sure to a lot of other people, it's just so cool like the variation and just all the really cool traveling experiences that you had. Cause yeah. I like yeah, to travel, travel and I know a lot of people love to travel and that's just, it's just fun. So, I, you know, and I've, I've had to decide if I like to travel, I do mm -hmm. a lot of it. And, and, you know, COVID just threw a whole kind of wrench <laughs> in every definition of everything, but you know, I feel like, man, I love to travel. And part of me, you know, when I was, I was scheduled to be home three days in March. Mm. When you get to that level, you're kind of like, ooh, travel. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do I understand how to get through an airport? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure you know how to get through the airports real fine. You you can you can do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the last question, because I know we are trying to target it around 20 minutes. Um, this one's kind of a bit open, but it's directed towards all the incoming freshmen and all the undergrads, um, if you one biggest piece of advice to all the incoming freshmen and undergrads for this semester or just for their careers as a whole, go. Yeah, go try stuff. Um, you know, it's this fine line between saying yes to too much and that's a problem. <laughs> I got that problem. Now I'm, I'm continuously dealing with those consequences of too much to do. Um, but you know what, because I said yes to a bunch of stuff, both from undergraduate, during graduate school, and even, you know, academics, career-wise, um, I'm doing things I never thought I'd do. I mean, as the director of the USA Food Safety Innovation Lab, you know, instead of doing research, I get to help choose the research portfolio for the U.S. State Department. Mm. I never thought I'd get to do that. I mean, that's, that's a pretty, you know, heavy lies the crown on there, but you know what's more fun? having other people write proposals instead of me writing proposals. <laughs> that's, a, that's a win. <laughs> um, so say yes, go try stuff and quit if you don't like it. 
and, and that goes for, for research here. You know, as you come in as freshmen, start in the lab, start figuring out if, if research is a thing you want to do. You're going to need the experience if you want to think about graduate school, if you want my job someday, you know, you can have it. You, I mean, I may not be my <laughs> Um, But you got to try stuff and figure out what you don't like, because it's just as important as what you do like. And it's okay to tell us no, like I'm done with this. This isn't my thing. I'm happier that you move on and go do something than kind of <laughs> sitting around wondering why you're still here. So say yes, but not too much. Say no when you're done and, and then repeat that cycle. Yeah, that's, that sums it up pretty perfectly. I mean, I don't know any freshman that doesn't get a little bit too overstretched in terms of commitments, but that's part well, of the fun. <laughs> it is. I think we have, what, a thousand student clubs? Yeah. I mean, that, that, and there's 40 or 30, I don't know. I don't know what the student numbers are this year. I, I don't know if we know yet. Um, but, you know, undergrad population rides around 30,000. I mean, that, that's a lot of clubs. <laughs> So there's something for everyone. And if there isn't, you can make one. You make mm -hmm. a new one. We'll yeah. We'll embrace that too. Yeah, but you can definitely get stretched then. <laughs> and as a, as a little last snippet, shameless plug for Food Science Club. We're planning some cool stuff. Hopefully we can actually do it. Um, You'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> we'll, <adapt>. we'll, <laughs> we'll get her done. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Haley. I know you're a busy right. person, but this, this is awesome. So. Yeah, I'm going on vacation here in a few minutes. That's why I'm like, can we speed this up? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Friday. It's a it Friday is, afternoon. Friday I wouldn't judge and, you. And uh, I've had my vacations uh, terminated several times since March. <laughs> Ideas, uh, they all burned down. Mm -hmm. So I'm optimistic that this one won't. But if it does, the dogs will be disappointed because I will be back with them. Poor dogs. Man. I know. It's, uh, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll you bet. Stop. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>